Hi, my name is Ashley Rogers, and I'm the director of Created Ministry. And I'm really excited because I have the opportunity. There's so many different art ministers that I've gotten to meet um, really all over the world that are doing some amazingly beautiful things, but to be honest, are doing drastically different things from each other. Um, and there's no really one way to do art ministry. So I wanted to get a chance to introduce you to some really amazing people um, so that you have an opportunity to see, number one, what God's doing around the world, what God is doing in the hearts of communities and the people that are um, being touched by art ministry. And then also just to give you a broader idea of what, what even is art ministry and what could this possibly look like? So this is not the way to do art ministry. This is one way that we're seeing God work. This is one way that we are um, we've been able to connect and see God do some really cool things in community. So that being said, I wanted to introduce you to my friend, Kim Wheatley, and she is in Cleveland. Uh, and I'm going to give her just a minute to just introduce herself and tell us a little bit about, um, her and her family and what brought her to Cleveland in the first place. So Kim, if you'd go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. Um, well, I, it not, so we had, I grew up in Cleveland in a, a small suburb. Well, not small, but suburb. And um, but lived in another suburb for like 30 some years. And then we felt God calling us into the inner city. So um, we didn't know what we were doing. We bought a house, didn't know what we were going to do with the house. We just I was just drawn to this house. We've had families living in here multiple families that most um, ha have dealt with like drug addiction and not that we were looking for that, but that just what God put in our lives. And um, so just in the last year, we, we actually have two other houses and we put families in there. And so in the last year we moved the family that was up here down, down the street. And so because it's so hard with living under, we live below, it's a, it's a duplex. And so we live below, it was really, really hard, eight years. And we turned it into an art studio. So we, and since then, and it wasn't even like, I didn't even know what I was going to do. I just had, so do you want me to just like keep going? Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. There's so many beautiful parts to your story that have gotten here. So yeah, will you tell me a little bit about um basically you you guys had this house and in the middle of um a neighborhood, right? So it's not a separate studio somewhere else in the city. It's the middle of a neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and you guys decided to turn the downstairs into this space for art ministry. Uh it's upstairs. Oh, upstairs, sorry. Um, so tell me how that, that piece happened between, I think we, it could be a hundred different things, right? So if you have a space, it could be, why art, why art, why did you want an art space? Um, well, even when I when first, we first bought the house, um, just to connect with people and that's a whole nother story, but, um, we had, um, I did an art project and like just painted canvases and I still have them and the kids did them and it was like, or, or making ornaments or whatever. And it just was like this really easy connection to people that just like to sit down and you know, do art. <laughs> I want to switch gears for a minute because one of the things that you shared and that you guys did recently, which was so cool. I, when I <laughs> saw you share pictures of this, um, I was just so excited because I feel like this number one, I've wanted to do something like this for a while, but also I feel like there is so much potential in so many neighborhoods and so, so many communities to, to do something like what you guys just did recently. So I want you to tell me a little bit about it. Um, and I'm saying it because I, I want you, I want to give you the chance to share about um, this rally event that you guys did. Um, but in sharing, if you'll also tell me a little bit about the the partnership that, that happened, because I know it wasn't just you. And I think that's really important for people to understand. Yeah. So the rally is through what's called Building Hope in the City. 
and that's a ministry that here in Cleveland, and they do um, like refugee, they're real big refugee work. Um, and they've been asking me to do this for like the last, I don't know, four years. Do it really, do it really. And I'm like, no, because I was so mentally drained. I could, I just couldn't do it. And, but this year I felt like, like I always knew kind of what I wanted to do, but I wasn't ready. So my, my thing, so um, they paid for everything. They bought, we bought, I don't know how many canvases, like uh, this back here, the, um, can you see it? The colorful one. It's okay. amazing. So yeah, tell us about that project. What, like, what is that? What did people do? So my, my thing was called painting through the pain that I wanted to connect um, like counselors because a lot of the people that are dealing with grief aren't getting the help, the real help that they need. So I can have an art class and talk to them about Jesus, but their, their issues are so deep. So my, I wanted to do, I wanted to connect people with somebody that on a more professional level. I don't know if it really helped, but we did have people here. And then the, the canvas idea, um, I, they paired me up with another girl who was like a mental health thing. So since our uh, ideas were similar, they put us together, which was great. And so hers was mental, like she's going to do a mental smash. And so the canvases, we got a big um, uh, board, like uh, like three, four by eight um, plywood sheets. And then we attached, I think it was 16 canvases, 16, uh, 22 by 36. Yeah, two by three. That's the one behind you, right? So that that's an example of one of them. What they did was filled up balloons we had tables at so we had stations anger um love joy sadness and fear and at each table i had canvases and so if somebody wanted to write um and uh something down on that canvas that okay fear what what are you afraid of i mean it was probably too much we had but it's you know got to try it and um but it did help some people. So, and at the tables, then they filled up their balloons with paint and we had balloons. And so then they would go to this big giant, you know, I don't even know what you want to call it. Uh, Look like a movie screen almost like just like this white, this movie screen. <laughs> so, and then they threw the paint. The idea was that they, whatever aggressions or whatever they're feeling, they would throw it at the blank canvases and um bust the balloons full of paint and it was oh my gosh it was so messy it was so messy but the kids especially loved it it just became a big mess um so people actually did it they they threw things at oh, yeah. at the canvases yeah. and it was this it your in y'all's driveway was this in oh, yeah. a community yeah i figured it was I, I figured that was probably yeah and they put glitter in there and everything i don't care but, you know, <laughs> It could, it's all washable. Well, it's actually still out there, but yeah, it was a mess, but it was good. Yeah. We shirts. We had other, th other things, tie-dyed shirts and food. They, you know, they uh, made different foods and yeah. Do you, do you think you'll do it again? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. So um, you, a couple of times you've mentioned something that I think is really, really important. You mentioned um, connecting with the sober house and that you also mentioned um, connecting with this other ministry for the event. But I think it's so many times we feel like we have to number one, either totally do things alone um, mm -hmm. or we specifically have to connect with like a, a, a specific church or a ministry that's, that's backing us, so to speak. And there is, so, yeah, I know I see you shaking your head because you're like, no, absolutely not. Um, and I, and I think you're right um, that there's so much power in connecting with, uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot. I know of not just ministries, but like you said, either nonprofits or just government organizations, even we've experienced that are like, uh, yes, please come help us. Mm -hmm. So how would you encourage somebody that feels like I want to do this? but I don't have like a church backing me or a ministry and maybe they could get connected with just some community, community organizations. How did you guys do that? 
just get in and see what's going on in your neighborhood, I guess. Um, it might be hard, maybe anything. All, it, all you have to do is connect with one person or like go to like your city. It doesn't have to be a church. Um, uh, I'm just trying to think like, you know, the cities all have something like some event or garden or uh, probably like go you want to do uh if you want to do some kind of art thing just to, just to start connecting with people you know run out of space or see it work with everybody has a community center it does, or do it in your home if you're comfortable with that mm -hmm. uh, does that make sense um yeah i i think um you know i think for for you that's become so second nature of just yeah see what's see what the need is and i think that has been something that has been the, the heartbeat for you guys for so long that it is hard to take that first step sometimes and going, I want to do this. Um, you've built up, a you've built up some credibility with people that know you and know, okay, this is, this is a safe thing. Um, but yeah, that, that first step is kind of hard of getting out of your comfort zone and approaching, approaching somebody else and saying, Hey, this is what I have to offer rather than waiting for that open door. Um, can you think back on, um, yeah, when was, when was just the time where you can think back on there was where, where you had to kind of step out and put yourself out there? I just kind of throw myself out there. I, I don't know who said this, but God doesn't swim, swim in the shallow end too much. You have, you have to go deep. And let me tell you something. Um, don't or whoever wants to do it, don't be afraid because I've had so many moments. It is scary and you're dealing with people's junk, but I have never seen God move so much. Is when you get in the dirt, you know, the that's, and you're so dependent on him because we were not connected to a church for a long time. And it's like, you have nobody but to depend on but God for everything and just praying for somebody like or you know it's just it really you have to get into people's lives and then if you're an artist people love art it doesn't matter where you are you go in the go in the park you know go to, at a picnic table hey we're gonna meet here let's and paint you know get whatever that cyan paper <laughs> let's do leaves whatever you, you just have to, I think, I, you just have to be, just be, it just has to be you and God, and then he'll do the rest. You depend on him, and he will do the rest, and he has, like, oh, unbelievable. I can't, unbelievable. I, I, I know it hasn't been easy, like, if somebody's wow. listening and going, oh, yeah, but, oh, that sounds amazing, I want to do that. I know, <laughs> I also know there's a lot of days you don't want to do that. All um, right. Yeah. So what, I mean, I've, I feel like you already answered this a little bit too, but what do you do when you just want to quit and you feel burnt out? Um, I wanted to quit before we got the space. It's like once we got the space and the family moved out, I mean, we're still taking care of them. We pay their, we pay their utilities and whatever, but it was like a freedom. Once I got the space and turned it into the studio and it was like, I knew God was in it. Somebody gave us a, a donation of a thousand dollars. I p people, I the couch was donated. I mean, everything. It's just I know God is in it. If God is in it, then it's like it's a no brainer. But it, I mean, it keeps it's so going. huh? It it keeps you going. I think. It does. Too. But um, as far as the art goes, I don't feel like quitting. I feel like, but I did before I did this. <laughs> Does that make sense? That No, that's actually really powerful what you just said, because I think so many times that um, once it's so true, once you start just being obedient to whatever it is mm -hmm. that he's put on your heart to do, he strengthens you for what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it seems like the exhaustion, yes, the exhaustion comes when we're in the middle sometimes. But so many times we end up actually quitting before taking those steps of obedience because, gosh, there's work to be done and the enemy knows that. And so if he can quit, get us to stop and be too exhausted before we even begin, that was an easy battle. You know, 
Um, yeah. yeah. So how would you, I'm just going to let you, if there's anything else you want to share specifically thinking about any art minister out there that's either wanting to do art ministry, wanting to be brave, going, okay, I, I, I want to do this or I want to get back into this. How would you encourage them? Don't overthink it and much motorcycles. Um, don't, don't think you have to have the answers for these people because you never will anyway. Um, and the art, whatever you're doing, and wherever you are, all it is is a tool to connect. Does that make sense? I think maybe that's what the biggest thing is. And even if they don't do art, if they're there, then, you know, I I just feel like it's, it's not like having I have journals, like um, when this one guy died, the one that lived with us, um, I think just being present, sorry, I'm a crier, <laughs> and um, knowing that they're there, for, you're there for them in their pain, and like, especially the kids, like if they've lost a parent, and you don't, and you want to stop the, the chains, the destructive chains that, uh, of addiction or whatever it is. And, but like the one, I have one little girl who, who her dad died and I said, just come over here and write. And I had a journal that, which was your idea. And they came out, she just wrote letters to her dad, you know, or she painted a painting for him and it helped her so much. Like, and even if that's it, just one person and then it's one kid or whatever, it's worth it. And they know that they know that we're here because God has us here and Jesus is the center. And her dad is with Jesus, thank God. He was an atheist up until right before he died. And you just be just like you said, just keep being obedient, lean on God for everything. And he, um, don't overthink it and have fun too. <laughs> you know, it's fun too. And you're going to meet so many people and don't think it has to be in a church. It can be in your yard. It can be anywhere. It's so true. And yeah, when we, when we stop having fun, you can, you can feel it. <laughs> um, and I think when um, it does bring joy, to do this. It does bring joy, um, to be obedient, but it's, but I love that you, you shared that because it isn't actually even just about obedience. It's, it's an honor and a, and a blessing to be part of people's lives, to be part of healing process. Um, in it, I think when we forget that sometimes we lose sight of, uh, that this is a, this is a mutual two way thing. Um, and so I, I'm thank you for sharing that. So this is something really important that I want to make sure that we're, we are really clear with anybody that has had a heart to do art ministry. All of this sounds really amazing. And the thing, the stories, the things that you've seen, but we have to be careful not to compare ourselves one person to the other. Well, that I can't do that. Or that sounds amazing. So what would you say to somebody that is listening to this and they're comparing themselves right now to what you're doing? What would I say? Well, um, what comes to my mind is like when I was looking, like watching your videos, okay, of the training that you had, which is all awesome. And like, um, and then I tried to do it with the people that came here. And I'm like, this isn't going like hers. And I'm not kidding you. And I, and then it's like over time, it's like, okay, this is how God has wired me. And this is, it's okay. So I don't have to do it exactly like Ashley, or I don't have to do it exactly like this person because God is going to, you didn't have to trust God that, um, well, first of all, Satan is messes with you as far as comparison goes. And we are all unique. Just like, uh, just like any piece of art is unique and don't, please don't compare yourself. And, 
it, it it'll give you freedom you know just go with the flow like i'm a go with the flow wing it kind of person and but i don't know i guess what comes to my mind is freedom don't be like everybody else because you are you god made you how you and why and knit you how he wanted you to be this way and even the people that he brings into like your class or whatever it is they are all individually they they are the uh, um <laughs> they are each individual just like nothing is this exactly the same and so i don't know i guess just don't worry about comparison or don't worry about you have to meet this or or they didn't complete this project or this didn't look like that and don't worry about it don't Thank worry you. gotta Thank work you. <laughs> it's so true and you know and it doesn't have to be big either you know it doesn't oh. have to be a big event it doesn't have to be it can be you no. know like you said one person coming in and journaling and that's that's enough that's okay yeah, yeah that's exactly okay yep give them a coloring book like you know like some people oh, these are you know give them just get you know if this is it you know, uh, what is it? Life is full of possibility. If this is all it is, that's all it is. So what? Yeah, doesn't have to be a brand new idea. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to come up with the most like creative, elaborate, and this is just going to heal everything. I just, okay. it's enough. Um, well, I am really grateful and we bless you guys and the ministry that God's doing and will continue to do. Um, bless everyone who walks through the doors of your home and that art space and your driveway um, and all of the surrounding neighborhoods and believe that God will continue to bring healing in those spaces and break generational chains and bring joy. So thank you so much for You're welcome. talking with us today. And it was really good to see you. Thanks for joining us for another session of Blank Canvases and stories of people being called into art ministry all around the world. Blessings, and we hope you join us again. Don't forget to check out createdministry.com for resources, tips, and ways that you can be trained in art ministry as well.